The Romance of the Ranchos. Los Angeles, 1830. American violates custom to win lovely senorita. Los Angeles, 1850. Murder of prominent American narrowly averted. Los Angeles, 1860. First theatrical troupe plays Los Angeles. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the colorful events and characters which make California history so interesting. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns to tell another true story of the days of the dawn. War Savings Bonds is the new official name for the securities that were formerly called Defense Savings Bonds. The change in name is significant. It indicates that America is now turning its attention to the all-out aggressive warfare which alone can bring final victory. So let us on the home front take the offensive too. Let us resolve again to go all out with the weapons we have, our dimes and dollars. Buy a war savings bond tomorrow. And now here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight we're going to trace the highlights from the life of Don Juan Temple, one of the earliest American pioneers in Southern California. On the land of Rancho Los Cerritos, his home, the great city of Long Beach now stands. The history of this man and the land furnish a romantic chapter in the romance of the ranchos. It was in the year 1827 that this young Massachusetts-born man, John Temple, stepped off a sailing ship in the sleepy little part of Alta California, San Diego. They'd just beaten a course from faraway Honolulu, and the travelers were thankful to set foot on dry land. Well, it's mighty pleasant, isn't it? Being able to stand up on your two feet, not feel a deck sliding out from under you. I, I must admit that the feel of the land is a good one, even if it is in such a godforsaken, out-of-the-way spot. Oh, you mean this lovely little village of San Diego? Sure, and what kind of hallucinations are you having? Lovely little village, is it? <laughs> You're daft, man. Never have I seen a more desolate spot on the face of the globe. Hot, dry, baked, dirty, lonely. In other words, this is not the sort of landscape that suits your fancy. Well, that's eh? putting it mildly. Why anyone in his right mind would want to be putting up here, I don't know. But as for me, it only makes me long the more for my green hills of Killarney. Ah, well, maybe you're right. Come back in a year or two and I'll tell you what I think. A year or two? Come back here? Yeah, and when you do, look me up. Well, here's where we say goodbye. Oh, man, what are you saying? Getting off here? You're out of your head. Well, maybe, but I'm staying here. And what's more, I think I'm going to like it. But, man, what will you do here? How will you live? What in the world? Oh, don't worry. From all I hear about this country, I'll get along all right. A man can make his fortune here, they tell me. Live like a king. Oh, but living here with these provincials, well, these... I think I like them. You know, they take things easy. No rush or fuss. Sounds good to me. Anyway, there's nothing you can say to change my mind. <laughs> I've thought it all over it, so I'm going to stay. You really mean it? Uh-huh. The first thing I'm going to do is get myself baptized in their church. Hmm. Then I'll become a citizen. And then, uh, well, I'll just be one of them. I should get along all right. Man, you are crazy. And it'll be my sad duty to tell all your friends that John Temple has buried himself alive at the end of the earth. <laughs> And California was just about the end of the earth, as far as the rest of the world was concerned, back in 1827, when John Temple became one of the first Americans to settle here. A few ships stopped at widely separated ports along the coast, but the towns were still the sleepy Mexican villages. John Temple had an idea that he'd find a good life, and he was right. For a while, he made his headquarters in San Diego, but soon he discovered Los Angeles and the beautiful country surrounding it. Then, too, there was another attraction nearby, the Senorita Rafaela Cota, 
was attraction enough for any man. And soon, Don Juan Temple was head over heels in love with the bright-eyed Spanish beauty. Finally, he called upon her one day. Ah, Senor Don Juan, it is you. Si, senorita. Buenas tardes. Uh, won't, won't you come in? Si, gracias. I, I'm sorry, senor. We did not expect visitors today. My mother is not at home. No? Well, I'm just as happy for that, senorita. For it's you I came to see. Oh, senor, you flatter me. No, senorita Rafaela. One cannot flatter the beauty of a sunrise. Senor! And Doña Manuela, charming as she is, could hardly hold the attraction for a young man that, that her lovely daughter does. Senor Temple, you are too bold. It is not proper that we should talk here like this alone. Well, but it is. This is just the chance I've been waiting for, for a long time. We've never had a chance to speak, well, privately. Always there must be your mother or your aunt or someone. That is the custom of my country, senor. You know that? Young people should not be alone. But there are things I want to say to you that I just can't say in front of other people. That is the very reason for the custom. You must not say them. It is not proper. Oh, come now, senorita Rafaela. Certainly there are times when you'd like to talk to a man. That is beside the point, senor. What we might wish is not important. We cannot. It is not done. But Americanos have no manners anyway, senorita, and I'm an American. <laughs> ah, so please don't run off. Stay for just a minute. But, but senor... Oh, I have something I want to ask. Uh, I know that in your country I should ask someone else first, but I just can't do it. I can't until I know how you feel. I, senor Don Juan? Very well. I shall sit here. Now, now what is it? Uh... <laughs> well, I... <laughs> you said you wanted to ask me something? Well, uh, see, si. oh, yes, I did, but... Uh, well, uh, well, now I have stayed. I am here, seated beside you. Ah, what did you want to ask? Um, well, I don't know how to say it. Oh, but you were so persistent. You said it was important. Something you could not say in front of others. Oh, it is. It's very important to me, senorita. And, and yet, now that I have consented to disobey my mother and listen to you, you will not ask. Are you afraid, senor? Oh, oh, see, I am. Now that the time has really come and I really have my chance, I, I'm afraid that your answer might not be what I want to hear. Oh, I cannot say what my answer will be if you do not ask. Come, senor. Uh, what is it they say? Faint heart never won fair lady? Oh, then you know. You've guessed? No, senor. Oh, but I was only quoting senor Shakespeare. Oh, senor, you're laughing at me. Oh, don't know one. I'm not. Really. But... What is it you want to ask me? Um, well, I love you, Rafaela. I want you to be my wife. Oh, senor. Well, I know I'm not much to look at. Probably you don't love me, but I, I think I can make you love me in time, and I'll try my best to make you happy. Oh, senor, I'm, I'm shocked. Shocked that you should speak of such a subject to me without my mother's permission. Oh, I know, but I had to find out how you felt. I, I just couldn't bring myself to... You are much too bold, Don Juan. If, if I had known the subject of your question... Oh, I should never have consented to listen. Oh, no, please, don't be angry. No, I apologize for my lack of manners. But... You should, senor. And, and now I must ask you to go. Senorita, you won't even tell me if you'd be pleased if I ask your mother? It is not proper, senor. And you must go. Oh, well, very well, then. But I guess that's plain enough how you feel. Well, I'm sorry to have troubled you, senorita. Buenos oh, dias. Oh, but, but, senor, wait. Please. I, well, per perhaps it would be better if I were to go and, and you were to wait here. Wait here? Oh, see, si. my mother, she will be here at any minute and, well, you might address your question to her, the, the proper person. Senorita, you mean you want me to? I should be most unhappy if you did not, querido mio. <laughs> And so Don Juan Temple found love in California, too. Soon he was married and settled in Los Angeles, and he started in business for himself. Very quickly, his little store prospered, for the Yankee had a keen business sense. Well, Mio Diego, they've arrived. If you mean those great packages from Mexico, see, si, Senor Temple, they are here. We haven't had time to unpack them yet. Never mind, we'll unpack just one of the packages tonight and have them ready to sell tomorrow. Just one? They're all alive? See, si, the whole batch. But what on earth are they? Never have I seen so many packages that took a whole train of cars to bring them. They're serapes. Serapes? Madre de Dios, is that all? 
just sells serapis. See, that's all. But, Senor Temple, what on earth for? Nobody sells serapis. Well, that's just the point. Nobody does sell any. And yet everybody uses them. It's considered a great treat to get a new serapi, imported from Mexico, and nobody has thought of importing some to sell right here. Oh, well, well, perhaps you're right. Of huh? course I'm right. You watch and see. Everybody will be buying serapis from me. I've got a corner on the business. <laughs> Talent in cornering the market on a product which everybody used was typical of John Temple's genius for business. Soon he was prosperous, a big man in a growing Pueblo. He never went in for politics, but at one point in 1836, his store was the meeting place for a crowd of the town's most important citizens. I'm telling you, senores, these things have gone on far enough. We've had enough of robbing and horse thieving and, and killing. Yes, me amigo. But what are we going to do about it? I'll tell you what we're going to do about it. We're going to have a police force. Police? Up, police that's force. right. That's right. Up to now, we've never had any need for them. But things are different these days. You'll have a hard time getting the citizens to put up their money for a police force. Sure we would. Only this police force won't be paid. No. Because we're going to do the policing ourselves. You mean we're going to be the police force? That's right, senores. This meeting was called to form the first company of the Los Angeles Vigilante Society. <laughs> In those rough days, strong measures were needed to protect peaceful citizens from lawlessness. John Temple was to learn that himself by hair-raising experience. Since there were no banks in those days, most people kept their ready cash hidden somewhere about the house. When they needed things, they dug up the family hoard. John Temple, however, had a system. He made regular shipments to San Francisco, where his shippers kept a credit balance on hand for him. He used to carry the money down to the boat at San Pedro, and it was after one such lonely trip that he was confronted by his worried brother, Francis, who had joined him in California. John. John, glory be, it's really you. Thank the Lord. Well, what in thunder are you talking about, man? Oh, were you hurt? Did he harm you? How do you feel? Oh, Francis, will you please explain yourself? Oh, you mean you, you don't know? No, no what? Well, did, didn't anything happen? Happen? When? On your ride down to San oh, Pedro. Of course not. It was a very pleasant ride. Nothing at all out of the way. Good Lord. How you escaped, I don't know. We were just forming a posse to look for you. A posse? Oh, now look here, Francis. Explain to me what this is all about. Why in the world should you send a posse out after me? I'm old enough to take care of myself. We just got word a little while ago that bandit Dave Brown was bragging around town that he was going to hold you up. He even told him his plans just before he left. He was going to waylay you on the road to San Pedro and then kill and rob you. Good Lord, me with all that gold? You didn't even see him. No. Well, I took a different road today. I had some property I wanted to see over in the left bank of the river. So I rode that way. No wonder probably still lying in wait in the main road to San Pedro. Holy Moses. I don't know what made me change my route today, but I thank the Lord I did. As Los Angeles grew and John Temple's fortune grew with it, the American began to dream of new fields to conquer. He longed to own a great rancho, as had a few other Americans. And one day, as he talked to his wife, a solution came to him. Ah, oh, it'd be great. Just think, Rafaela. To have a lovely home in the country, a great rancho of your own. See, si, I know. You forget I have known rancho life. In fact, I own part of a rancho, Los Cerritos. See, si, so you do. I'd almost forgotten. Oh, but all your brothers and sisters own part of it, too. I mean one all our own. But have you thought perhaps Los Cerritos could be ours? All ours. Why? What do you mean? None of my brothers and sisters live there. It is useless to them. They are not interested in being rancheros. Many are married, live elsewhere. The land is not used at all. No, but that doesn't change the fact that they own it. It could. Many times I have heard my brothers express the desire to sell their share in the rancho. They would rather have what money they could get than the land. No. They've really said that? See, si. And as for the girls, what do they care about it? They have ranchos or homes of their own. Oh, I see. Of course, right under my nose. A fine rancho. Fertile land for grazing, big enough for thousands of cattle close to the harbor. Everything's ideal. And I hadn't even thought of it. But you have now. See, si. With your help, querida mia. And I shall buy the rancho Los Cerritos from your brothers and sisters. And on it, I shall build a most beautiful home for you. <laughs> If you own a car, you probably have insurance on it, so that if it should be stolen, your loss would be repaid by the insurance company. 
When you buy a home, title insurance is just as necessary because here, too, you run the risk of serious loss. If your title is ever proved invalid, perhaps because of some illegal sale or transfer long ago, you can lose your home. Now, obviously, you may have neither the time nor the required experience to examine your own title. But you can buy the service of experts to do this for you when you get title insurance from the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. The company will not only do this work for you, but it will also ensure the accuracy of its findings. It also protects you against many common off-the-record defects not revealed by the public records. And any loss or legal expense that you may suffer ever because of any one of these defects will be repaid by the company up to the full amount of the policy. Title insurance is the only safe and sound protection of your investment in land. And Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles provides this protection at rates so moderate that no property owner can afford to be without it. Learn how inexpensively you can obtain title insurance for your property. For $275 apiece to each of the 12 children of Doña Manuela Nieto de Cota, Don Juan Temple purchased the great Rancho Los Cerritos, upon which today stands most of the city of Long Beach. There he built a great hacienda. Now, he was a great cattle baron as well as merchant. His interests, his investments, and his affluence grew apace. Soon he held a mortgage on the Mexican government's mint in Mexico City, a mortgage for which he once refused $1 million cash. His ventures in Los Angeles were to make him famous too. For in 1858, at Main and Temple Streets, was completed a great building, a building built by Don Juan and called the Temple Block. But at first, this venture was a failure because... But George, what's wrong with it? Why won't you rent space? Well, Johnny, it's a mighty fine building. Best in these parts, no doubt about that. But, uh, well, I, I don't know. Now, wait a minute. There must be some reason. You say it's fine, but you don't want to rent space for a store. You say it's the best building in Los Angeles, but you're going to stay where you are. Now, what's the matter? Am I asking too high rent? Oh, no. Your rent's mighty reasonable, considering how new and fine everything is. No, it ain't rent. And what in heaven's name is it? Oh, nothing, Johnny. It's fine, but... But you won't rent. I don't understand. Here I build what I think will be the show place of Los Angeles, and nobody, nobody will rent it. They won't even tell me what's wrong. You really want to know, Johnny? Would I be asking you if I didn't want to know? Well, just take a look at the door. Yeah? Well, what's wrong with it? a perfectly good door. Oh, yes, but look what leads up to it. You mean the steps? Yep, that's it, Johnny, steps. Why couldn't you have built your stores flush with the streets? Why did you have to raise them up and put steps up to the door? Well, why not? It's more artistic. It looks better. No, but you'd starve to death in those stores. Starve to death? Sure, you know. You ran a store once. People won't climb stairs to buy, Johnny. No siree. They just won't climb stairs. As long as they feel that way and as long as you got stairs on your stores, I'll stay where I am. The defect remedied, John Temple's building prospered. And in spite of the shaky start as a builder, he completed an even larger project the next year, in 1859. This was the first Los Angeles courthouse, a landmark for many years. It was an unusual building for the Los Angeles of that day in many respects. For instance, it had a high tower with a huge four-sided clock. It was such a local landmark that... Hey, uh, sir, here you are. Just step right up here. I've got a real bargain to show you, sir. Mm. What are you selling, young man? I just arrived in your fair city from the mighty metropolis of the East, and I brought with me the latest in timepieces. Now, right here is a lovely old genuine silver-plated pocket watch as fine, as fine a little clock as ever was offered for only $3. Now, as a special bargain to you, sir, I'll give it to you for only... A watch, uh... you say, young man? Mm -hmm. Well, never mind giving me a bargain. It won't do you no good. Well... Yes, but my dear man, no one can afford to be without a watch. Temper sure does fool it. Time is precious, you know. How long you been in this town, young fellow? Well, I just arrived this morning, sir. You're my first customer, and that's why I'm willing to part with this jewel of a timepiece for only... Well, to... Sonny, you picked the wrong town. Take a look up there. Huh? Where? See that there clock on the tower there? Oh. Well, it's got four faces. You can see it from a mile outside of town from any direction. From a... Well... Nobody in this town keeps a watch. They don't need them. You'd better catch the next boat out. You expect to make your living selling them chronometers. Although the lower floor of the Temple Block was given over to a great city market, the upstairs soon took on importance in the city life. The courtrooms of the United States District Judges took up a part of the upstairs, and the other half became the first theater in Los Angeles. 
Great was the excitement when, in November of 1860, the company of Stark and Ryder imported all the way from San Francisco, inaugurated the new stage. No more will you be pursued by this vile villain, Little Nell, for I, True Blue Herald, will protect you, and virtue is triumphant once again. <laughs> No telling when that nasty man might get loose. A body's not safe with a man like that around. Oh, but, Marthy, it's only play acting. He ain't really a villain. Oh, don't tell me. I saw him with my own eyes. And he must be a bad man to play that part so well. And besides George Smith, I saw you making sheep's eyes at that... that painted hussy on the stage. Oh, Come on, you're going home right now. <laughs> John Semple introduced the first theater in Los Angeles and was a leader in bringing other cultural advantages and civic improvements to the fast-growing little town. Early, he'd been instrumental in founding a library association and acted as its first president. He had planted the first trees on downtown streets around his temple block. Late in 1860, he put in the first brick sidewalk, a vast improvement over the rickety wooden ones in use. But he made one mistake. For one day, the following summer... John Temple! Well! Well, excuse me, amigo. What can I do for you? Don't sling that Spanish at me. I'm going to sue you. What? Sue me? Oh, what for, George? What have I ever done to you? This. Now, looky here. Just look at my shoes. They're ruined. And I'm going to sue you for a new pair. What in the world do you have on them? It's that black pitch, that tar. Where'd you get it? What did I get to do with it? Where'd I get it? From off in your sidewalks, that's where. You covered your bricks with that dad-blasted La Brea tar. And now in the heat of the day... Well, look. Look out the window. Just take a look at them. Well, what in the world? Yeah, it... just look at them. Look at the people practically wading through that soft tar. Why, they're worse than the old mud sidewalks. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't think about the hot sun on them. No? Well, you'd better do something about it pretty quick, or you're going to have to buy everybody in town a new pair of shoes. <laughs> In spite of an occasional embarrassing moment, John Temple said Main Street, the aging pioneer was honored by having a thoroughfare named Temple Street, the name it still bears. But now, old Don Juan was not young anymore, and the cares of business weighed heavy upon him. So it was that in 1866, he gave directions to his business agent, Don Ignacio Garcia. Welcome to Rancho Los Cerritos, Don Ignacio. Gracias, Don Juan. You have a nice trip down? Si, it is always pleasant to come down here to this beautiful rancho. I don't blame you for staying here most of the time. Yes, I know what you mean, but that's what I called you down here for. I'm not going to stay here anymore. Not stay here anymore? You're coming into town? No, I'm going to sell out, mi amigo. Leave. Don Juan, you don't mean that. You're not going to leave California. See? But, But why? Where will you go? What are you thinking? I know, I know. It was a hard decision to make, but I've made it. You see, I've made my pile. I'm comfortably fixed. If I sell the rancho, pull up stakes, my family and I can travel, see the world. But where? Where will you go? Oh, Paris, maybe. You know, we went over there a while back. My wife likes it, and my daughter found a handsome gentleman over there. So it may be Paris. Ah, oh, mi amigo, but surely you'll come back. I don't know. That remains to be seen. But I'll keep in touch with you. You will still handle my business. All except Los Cerritos here. And what about the rancho? I'm going to sell. I've talked to a couple of fellas... Flint, Bixby, and company, they call themselves. And they've offered me uh, $20,000 in gold. Caramba, that is a good price. See, see, especially since things have been going badly here for some time. Drought, taxes and everything. I'll be glad to get out from under. That is a very good price. I wonder why they pay that much in these times. They're willing to for a reason, don't they, There's going to be a change here soon. A change? Oh, yeah, it's coming. These men aren't thinking of Los Cerritos as a cattle rancho. They're going to raise sheep. Sheep? Yeah. They'll make a go of it, too. Sheep? On a Southern California ranch? I know it'll offend the cattlemen, but it'll save the rancheros. You wait and see. Well, why don't you stay and raise sheep? <laughs> oh, no, mi amigo. I'll leave that to the others. I'm going to relax a little now, enjoy life a little. No, this is goodbye to California for John Temple. <laughs> But John Temple never did say goodbye to California, for he only had time to sell the rancho, settle up his affairs, and travel as far as San Francisco, 
before death caught up with him late in 1866. Thus ended a life which meant much to the early growth of our Southland, a pioneer whose enterprise spelled progress for the community. Such is the romance of the ranchos. In California's early days, land was bought and sold, traded and mortgaged much as it is today. But the total volume of such transactions naturally was much less. The customary procedure before model t modern title insurance service was available was to have some competent person make a search of all the available public records and make a report, which was called an abstract. This abstract was then passed upon by an attorney, and the deal was closed if, in his opinion, the title was sound. The purchaser, however, had no insurance to protect him against loss in the event that some document might have been accidentally overlooked or incorrectly construed. Today, such insurance is available from the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. And because of the efficiency of its hundreds of trained employees, both the search of the records and the insurance of the accuracy of the complete title examination cost modern landowners much less than partial protection did in the early days. And now, Frank, what's the story for next week? Next week, we're going to trace the history of a romantic tract of land which houses a great part of Hollywood and Los Angeles today. The Rancho La Brea, which was owned by a colorful pioneer of the Southland, Major Henry Hancock. It's a dramatic story which goes back clear to prehistoric times. For on the rancho are the La Brea pits, from which many valuable prehistoric relics have been taken. Be sure to hear it. And now, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Rancho is a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, Featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Gaylord Carter. Bob Lamond saying good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.